take this opportunity to congratulate you on your good fortune. Your voice has a nice sinister curl to it. Say what you want to say. I, uh, I want to wish you good luck on your reconciliation with your wife. Thank you. Isn't it amazing the things that love can do to bring you two together again after what you've been through? It isn't really amazing if you know what love is about. Well, yes, I suppose I don't know anything about love. I guess that's why she married you ten years ago and not me. I'll go one step further. I think you've gone beyond the point of even knowing what it is. Well, I guess we can chalk that up to five years in a confined area. Better luck next time. I'm glad you said that, because there will be a next time. It begins right now. Devlin, I couldn't care less about your future. Well, you'd better care, because you're part of it, and so is your wife. I strongly advise you to stay away from Laura. You're not in a position to give that kind of advice. If you had any regard for her, you would understand that her struggle back to normalcy was far greater than your so-called rehabilitation. Her mental state is still very delicate, and pressure from anyone like you could very likely send her back to the institution, possibly for the rest of her life. Oh, come on, Roger. Don't give me that delicacy routine. I spoke to her. Then you don't know her very well. I know her better than you do. I've always known her better than you. She won't crack. Then leave her alone, and let her do what she has to do. I'll give that advice to you. The same advice to you. You don't have the right. Neither do you. I'm her husband. Are you? <laughs> Are you really? What's the matter, Devlin? Does that smash all of your sadistic hopes? Have I blown all of your theories? You're losing, Devlin, and you can't take it. I know, Laura. Oh, of course you do. At least you say you do. That's all you've been saying. But this is something that your ego can't take. We'll see where Laura stands when the chips are down. I do hope I'm interrupting something. Carolyn, what are you doing here? I saw your car parked outside, so I thought I'd drop in. Hello, Mr. Evans. Oh. <coughs> Hello, Mr. Burke Devlin. Hello, Carolyn. Oh, Carolyn, while you are here, suppose when you tell Mr. Devlin what you've come down to town for. I came down to pick up my Aunt Laura's suitcase. And where is your Aunt Laura now? At Collinwood. Hmm? And what did you tell the hotel clerk? That she was checking out and... Oh, uh, he said he would send the bill to you. Oh, thank you very much. You're a very efficient little girl. All right. Well, now I think I'd better get back to Collinwood. I'm having a late snack with Carolyn's Aunt Laura. We have a lot of catching up to do, and we have plans to discuss and things to do together. It's been a very pleasant encounter running into you like this. You coming along, Carolyn? I'd like to stay for a few minutes. Well, I think that's a good idea. Mr. Devlin looks like he could use a little cheering up. Good night, Evans. Oh. Well, I think I've had my nightly quota. Well, good night, everyone. Oh, please don't go on my account, Mr. Evans. Oh, it's definitely not on your account. Thank you. That's very nice of you. I'd love to sit down. Yes, I think this cold weather we're having is absolutely marvelous. I'm sorry. My mind was somewhere else. Well, as long as your body's here. It will be here for a few minutes, won't it? Yes, it will. And your mind. Will that be here, too? That, too. Good. I'd be terribly embarrassed to sit here and have you absent-mindedly call me Laura. Yeah, Mike. <clears throat> George. Yeah, did you get confirmation on that teletype report from Phoenix Check? You did, huh? All right, I'm going to continue looking for Roger Collins. Yeah, I'll call in again. Thanks.
Mr. Johnny, I didn't invite him to sit down. Well, why didn't you stand up and walk away? Well, because it would have made me look too suspicious. Well, it was all very embarrassing. I'm sorry. Didn't even know he was there. <laughs> well, I uh, thought he was being pretty clever, I guess, but I must say that you topped him beautifully. Well, you can save the applause and tell me what it is you brought me here for. Well. In the first place, I want to know just how we stand as far as your wife is concerned. Well, it's very simple. Laura has no idea of getting involved in any investigation about that accident. She has too much to lose, oh. David. That's good. Then we're in pretty good shape, huh? Relatively. If I can trust Laura, I've got to keep a watch on her and keep her away from Devlin. But what is it that you brought me here for? Oh. Come over here. You didn't bring me here to see your paintings. I did. Oh, what a waste of time. No, not this one. I don't want to see your paintings, Evans. No, you want to see this one. What for? I know. No, I, something strange has been happening. I, I haven't been feeling right in the past few days. Booze. No, no. Not something else. I started a painting the other night. The strangest thing happened. I started to work. It seems as if I had... No control over my brush, over myself. But a painting started to emerge. A painting not in my style. Are you drinking? Sure, sure. I had a few. But I, I've worked on it sober, too. I'm telling you, Roger, it isn't, isn't even the kind of subject matter that I do. I don't understand what this is. Why it's happening. If you have a problem with your profession, that's your business. No, no, no. This is your business, too. I don't understand you. You will, when you see it. That's my wife. That's Laura. What does it mean? Tell me, what does it mean? Oh, you drunken fool! My dear Aunt Laura seems to have you in a sweat. Don't be absurd. You can't get her out of your mind. When I'm with you, you're the only thing on my mind. Oh, swell. Save it for the next time. Or at least when it's the truth. I'm sorry again. You're the most delightful girl I've ever met. And that's the truth. And you don't deserve half my attention. You deserve all of it. And you're going to have it now. I'm ready. The only thing that bothers me is I can't believe that Laura would share a room with your uncle. There you go again. Well, to put your mind at rest, she isn't. She's not? She isn't in the house itself. Well, then where is she? She's staying in Matthew's old cottage. With or without Roger? Without. Now that you've pumped all the information out of me, how about the other half of your attention? Coming right at you. What is it, George? I've been looking for you, Mr. Collins. Well, you found me. I just received a report, a teletype report, from the Phoenix, Arizona Police Department. The report says that a body, identified as that of Laura Collins, was found burned to death in a fire. Well, I'm sorry to shock you this way, Mr. Collins. Well, you'll have to explain what you were saying. 
Well, I'm afraid I can't explain it. I can only tell you what the Phoenix Police Report told me, that a body identified as that of Laura Collins was found a few days ago, burned to death in Phoenix. Well, that's ridiculous. Well, ordinarily, I wouldn't break news of this kind to you the way I did, but I heard a rumor that Mrs. Collins was back in town. Well, that's true, so the whole thing is preposterous. Well, that's what it seemed to me. I went to the inn, but they said that she had checked out, that she was living here. Is that true? Yes, that's right. Well, the uh, register at the inn said that she checked in there three days ago, which was the same date as the fire in Phoenix. Well, Sheriff, it's obvious to the least intelligent person that this report is erroneous. Well, that's what I thought, so I telephoned to Phoenix. I told them that Laura Collins is here in town, and I asked them to verify their identification. And what did they finally say? Well, they said that the identification was positive. They said that the body that they had found was definitely Laura Collins. How can they be so positive it's the body of my wife? Well, the building that she was living in was burned, not entirely to the ground, but the body was found in what was left of her apartment. Who identified the body? Well, no one specifically. The body was burned beyond recognition. Well, then how did they identify her? Well, the medical examiner uh, established her age and other physical characteristics. Well, he was wrong. Well, the uh, identification was also a matter of logic, Mr. Collins. Well, that's a piece of logic I'd like to hear. Well, everyone else survived. Everyone else was accounted for except Laura Collins. There was only one fatality, and the body was found in her apartment. Sheriff, would I seem naive if I suggested that somebody has made a mistake? No, you wouldn't. There certainly has been a mistake. But there is also an unanswered question. Yes, that's exactly right. A charred body in Phoenix. Yes, and there has got to be an answer to that question. Well, we'll let the police in Phoenix worry about that. Yes, except that they have asked me to ask Laura Collins a few questions to see if we could help clear up just who it is they have found. It's possible that she was letting someone else use her apartment. Well, I don't know about that. Well, I would like to uh, speak to her for a few minutes, if you don't mind, anyway. All right. She's staying down in Matthew's cottage. But there's something I want you to understand. She's been under a terrible strain. Well, I'm aware of that. And I would suggest that you not pressure her with your third-degree type of questioning. Well, I had no intention of doing that, Mr. Collins. There is no accusation being made. Right, come along. Hello, Mr. Collins. Hello. Sorry to bother you like this, Laura, but the sheriff wanted to get a good look at you with his two eyes. Well, it's nice to see you again, Mrs. Collins, after all this time. Thank you. I uh, have a few questions that I'd like to ask you, if you have a few moments. Of course. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Mrs. Collins, the uh, Phoenix Police Department has been in touch with me. Yes, they asked me to uh, ask you a few routine questions. What about? Well, have you been residing at 443 Mesa Street? Yes. Do you uh, still maintain a residence at that address? Oh, yes, I do. The keys are in my purse. And when were you last at the apartment? Oh, about a week ago. Well, let's see, about eight or nine days, I think. And you arrived here three days ago? That's right. Well, there's a uh, gap there of about five days. How did you travel? I traveled by train to St. Louis. And I spent about, oh, a half a day between trains, and then I went on to Boston. 
And from there by bus to Collinsport. Of course, I uh, stayed overnight in Boston. Well, that accounts for the time, then. Sheriff, why don't you just tell her what happened? Please, Mr. Collins. Did you leave any of your uh, personal effects in the apartment? Oh, yes, clothing and other things. Did anyone else have a key to the apartment? Not that I know of. Has there been a robbery? No, no. A fire. A fire? In my apartment? Well, the whole building was burned three days ago. Oh. Well, was anyone hurt? Yes, yeah, several people were burned or had smoke inhalation. But there was only one fatality. Oh? Well, who was it? Well, the body was identified as that of Laura Collins. Sheriff, I wish you wouldn't be quite so melodramatic. Well, Sheriff, what do you think? Well, I don't think anything, Mrs. Collins. The, uh, you are here, and that's obvious. That's a fact. The uh, Phoenix police did want me to find out if you had any idea at all about who might have been staying in your apartment. No, no, none whatsoever. Sure there weren't any friends that might have been? Well, I knew very few people. Well, it beats me. I guess I'll have to let Phoenix figure it out. Well, the body's in their territory anyway, not mine, luckily. Oh, well, Sheriff, what made them think it was my body? Well, the body was found in your apartment. What condition was it in? It was uh, unrecognizable. I see. Sheriff, this is a very distasteful conversation. Oh, that's all right, Roger. I, I want to be as helpful as I possibly can. Oh, I'm sure this is unpleasant for you. I'll phone them as soon as I get back to the station. Well, I'm sorry I can't give you more information. Oh, you've been very helpful. Thank you. I'm sure they'll make a positive identification very soon. Will they? Oh, yes. They've gotten very good at that. Well, this isn't much of a welcome, but it was nice to see you again, Mrs. Collins. Thank you. I'll be right along. Would you mind waiting for me? Oh, certainly, Mrs. Collins. So long, Mrs. Collins. Goodbye. Well, the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. What do you make of it? I don't know what to say. Well, what has gone through my mind hearing this, I've begun to wonder what effect this may have on your plans. What do you mean? Well, you have no place to go back to, to take David to. Oh, I, I see. Well, as a matter of fact, I hadn't planned on taking David to that apartment. No, I made a commitment for another place. Oh, well, then that's fine, then. I have to go, but I want to come back and talk to you about Devlin. All right. Good night. Good night, Roger.